this week on Titan. Titan, this is Tim at Coletta Motorsports. We can compete with anybody else in the world right now. I guess I'm gonna see you next week down in Sonoma. Oh, you ready, Dana? Our country was built on a foundation of American manufacturing. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. But today, we've seen millions of jobs lost and 100,000 manufacturing plants have been closed. Into the republic for which it stands. Join us as we take a stand for American manufacturing and fight to bring those jobs back home. One nation, one nation, one nation, under God, under God, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. This industry is hidden from the general public, locked behind closed doors. Today, all of that changes. Every week on Titan, we're going to show you great American companies that are manufacturing and doing it big right here in America. We're gonna teach advanced manufacturing techniques, and we're gonna clearly show you how to bring work back to our shores. It's time to put Americans back to work. Beautiful babies right there. You guys excited? Yeah. Whoa. Big old forklift coming off of there. What's up, Jerry? Titan, how you doing, man? Nice to see you. Oh, good to see you, man. I'm excited. It's like <laughs> Christmas in July, huh? There you go. We got a couple of new ones for you. We'll Woo! Knock these things out and put them in there. These are big boys, too. Why don't you uh, take me in and show me where they go? Yeah, let's go check it out. Wow, the place looks fantastic since I seen it last. Thanks, Jerry. We've Very been doing nice. a lot of like build outs and stuff, but the machines have been running, and I'm excited to get these two machines right here. Pretty awesome. This is the American dream. Started out with nothing and uh, built this incredible shop, and we're just taking it to a whole nother level. I think everybody on camera knows my son Tyson. Tyson's my lathe foreman. He knows it like the back of his hand because he lives it. And I'm so proud of my son. Today I'm like super excited also because my, my other son, Chris, just came and started working for us. Chris has worked at the shop off and on since he was 16 years old. He moved away, went to the East Coast, was doing his thing, working and stuff. He just came back, accepted a job from the company. I got five kids, I got them all in one place. We're building the company. I'm working with my sons. Titan works here off and on also, my 18-year-old, and uh, it's just a family business, family affair. Going after the American dream. We got machines showing up. We're doing it on TV, being an example of just how hard work, determination, overcoming struggles, that you can do it right here in America. You can manufacture. And this season of Titan American Built is just gonna be incredible. We're gonna check out some awesome companies. We're gonna dissect them. We're gonna to talk to the owners. We're gonna look at processes and machining. We're gonna show the world American manufacturing on a huge level. I'm excited. Boom! Awesome. Let's break this thing apart. 
Oh, so you guys are gonna put the five axis in here? Yeah, so we're actually putting the five axis trunnion right on this side, and then I'm gonna put vices over here so we can run different parts and we'll be able to run the five axis all at the same time. So it'll be super good. So, hold on one second. This is Titan. Titan, this is Tim at Coletta Motorsports. Coletta Motorsports. Tim, how are you, man? Good to hear from you. Yeah, we've been busy. How are you been? Oh, I've been so good. I'm standing in front of a big old VF6 SS. I got another lathe just now. We're cranking out parts, man. Hey, speaking of parts, we have a new injector spacer for our top fuel dragster that we need to get done like in the next week to two weeks tops to get ready for the nationals. And my shop's gonna be down for a couple weeks while we're setting the machines up and getting the electricians in here to finish wiring them. You think you could help us out with this? Absolutely, that's American manufacturing. You got new machines, I got new machines, but I got some availability. So go ahead and send me over the drawings, send me over some solid models, I'll check it out. And if I can do it, I will make it happen. Yeah, I have a model and a drawing. Uh, I can send it out to you and take a look at it. That's perfect, send it out to me, I'll check it. I'll get right back to you and if we're good, I'll download my team and we'll make it happen. Well, I know if it can be done, you'll be the one to do it. It's good talking to you, and I can't wait to see what we can do. Awesome, Tim. That sounds great. Thank you for the vote of confidence. And uh, yeah, send me over the drawings, and we'll make it happen, all right? All right, thanks a lot, Titan. Cool, thank you. Bye. Next on Titan. Real part for a real race car. I want to show you our race car that goes 330 miles an yeah. hour. Exciting day, huh? Yeah. Two new machines. Took care of the lathe department, took care of the mill department. Yeah. Boom. So who's the new guy? The new guy. You know him. Chris, yeah. my son, he's back. He's gonna help Dana, Stuart, everybody in the mill department make things happen. So I was with Tyson and Christian and we were checking out the VF6 and I got a call from Tim over at Coletta Motorsport. You guys ever heard of Coletta? Yeah, I've heard of them. Yeah, they're legit. And they have all these new Haas machines that just came in, all right? But he sent me this part, he needs us to manufacture it, and it's for the Dragster Internationals are coming up like in just like two weeks. So we're gonna show that we can manufacture on a high level right here in America and add some horsepower to it. Starting off our season two for a Titan American bill. New machines, cool parts, a lot of horsepower. Yeah. It's gonna be awesome. All right, so here is the part. It's 7050 aerospace grade aluminum. It sits right on the engine. Stuart, you wanna explain what this part is? The injector spacer is to pick up the upper set of injectors above the blower, so that way they have more time to atomize. So they're cranking it all up so they get more clean air inside, Yeah. right? So the air is actually funneling right through here, Yep. right? Cool, so this is the part, looks really awesome. It's got these like ribs, like aerospace ribs, taking all the weight out of it. So we're gonna lift this up, flip it around. We're gonna use the Autodesk Inventor HSM high speed machining to just nail every single cavity all around it. We're gonna spin it on the five axis and just 3D mill everything at the same time. Then we're gonna flip it over, get some kind of a spacer, some soft jaws, hold it. The entire part will be done. We'll face it off, do the O-ring groove, Make sure it's perfect and the part will be done. All right, Matt, you get material yet? Uh, I'm gonna order it right now. We're gonna have it here by tomorrow. Yep, I'll get Stuart involved, help me out. Cool, man, we're gonna make it happen. The Nationals are here, so this is going on this car. There's only one shot. Cameras, no cameras. This is a real part for a real race car and a real team. We have to nail it, full American quality. We gotta make it happen. Let's do it. I love the attitude. Uh. It's a new season. We got new machines. American manufacturing. Oh, we're gonna make it happen. All right. One, two, three. T Titan. One, two, three. T Titan. All right. So today is gonna be an awesome but busy day here at Titan America. It's 7 a.m. and we're gonna get into some heavy-duty CNC machining. 
We got this awesome part from Coletta Motorsports. They called yesterday and they said they need this part right away. This is for a drag racing engine. This engine has 10,000 horsepower and this particular part is an injector riser. It's gonna raise the injector up so we can get some nice clean air coming into the engine. The NHRA Sonoma Nationals are just a week away. This riser is gonna give a little bit more power to this engine, giving them a better chance. To get this part done, we're gonna to have to work in unison. I'm gonna have Dana help me with the programming. I'm gonna build a fixture plate. I'm gonna get Stuart involved. The sickest thing about my job is that I get to come here and I get to make car parts, which is one of my huge hobbies. I got way too many cars and I love them all. Manufacturing is all about creativity. Whatever the fastest way of getting it done is, that's what you need to do. And then you gotta figure out how to run as many parts as possible. So what we have here is just a big old chunk of metal. The part that we're machining is 17 inches. The fixture plate is 19 inches. When you flip this over, you're gonna see a round spud. When this fixture drops onto the five axis table, the spud will engage. It'll make it so it can't move. I got my groove in the center right here. I had to design a way to get the material to sit exactly center. I created a big channel and I put T-stops. I call it a T-stop because basically the channel comes up and then we create little T's. So when I slide it, it hits. So then we're gonna take this entire plate, drop it in, and then we have these big bolts, half 13s. They're gonna drop down inside. They're actually counter bore, so the hole gets smaller inside. And we have the T-slot anchor, the T that's upside down inside. Every table in CNC machining has grooves, and it opens up on the bottom, so this anchor drops down, and then we lock it down. So we're gonna lock it down right here, and it cannot move. We're going to finish off this fixture with these Mighty Bite clamps. I got a knife edge, it's nice and sharp. The Mighty Bite's gonna lay down and dig into the material. It's gonna hold it in place and nothing is gonna move it. I'm putting four on this side, and then I'm putting four on this side, locking it, and it ain't going nowhere. If you got rigidity and a good fixture plate, you can run fast and hard, and that's what it's about when we're dealing with American manufacturing, making it happen. I just got done machining my fixture. Dana just gave me a tool list. I'm gonna go set up the five axis machine. I have to choose my tools very carefully for this injector riser. I have to make sure that the end mill is perfect, make sure there's no chips on it, make sure that the end mill itself will not mess up the finish on the inside of this riser. If that finish is too smooth, the fuel won't break up and it won't atomize. If the surface is too rough, the air will stall and you will not get as much flow. So it's one of the very important things with this part. I'm super excited that I get to come to work and I get to make car parts. Titan just gave me this pretty cool part for uh, Kalita, the injector spacer for a drag car. I got the solid model and Autodesk Inventor HSM. The Stewart's got all my tools set up. I've got my program done. Starting out with a three inch face mill, face the top, make a nice finish. Gonna come in with a big one inch two fluid Imco end mill. Hog all the material off the outside, a big pocket in the middle. Rough all the extra material off the outside, and then I'm going to come in with that same big end mill, get rid of all the material on the inside. It's going to be tearing it up, flinging chips everywhere. Finish with a half inch end mill. After finishing the profile, I'll come in, nail some of the pockets on the sides, do the 3D work on the end. There's some tricky little pockets, do some ball tracking. O-ring groove that's tight tolerance and the first side will be done. This part would be a little more difficult if we're on a regular vertical mill, but because we're using the Haas UMC 750, the five axis, we're able to take the part, flip it on the side and nail all four sides 
all at once. Otherwise, it'd turn into five, six different operations on a vertical mill. So it's, this is gonna really save a lot of time. What's up, Sean? Hey, Dana. I got this thing done. Okay, so Dana just brought me the first operation of the injector spacer. He ran it on the fifth axis, which means he was able to do the work of multiple operations at one time. So the first thing I did was take it over to my surface plate for some manual inspection. I laid it down and put the drop indicator on it to check some depths of this O-ring seal on the face of the part. I took my thread gauges and miner pins to make sure that the threaded bores were good that the locations were good to themselves and also in relation to the main body of the part. Then I brought the part over to my CMM table, fixtured it up, and wrote a program. Not only is the CMM good for accuracy of measurement, also it's good for repeatability. Since this is a pretty intricate part and there's a lot going on, we have to make sure that we start off on the right track. If we've got any mistakes now on the first operation, by the time we get to the end, we could have big problems. So, the part checks out. I'm gonna go give Dana the green light for production. All right, D. Looks nice. good. Run it? Yeah. Right on. Fifth axis gets it done, huh? Cool, oh. I was just dialing in on B. I'll get the other side cut, get it back to you. Okay, good job, man. So I just programmed the second side for this injector spacer for Coletta Motorsports. What is awesome is Coletta Motorsports, they also use Autodesk Inventor, the CAD CAM system. They designed the part. They made sure the part assembled perfectly in 3D to the engine, made sure everything was perfect. Then I took the program, the solid model that they created over in Detroit, and I put it into my system. This is the Inventor HSM. I put it in here, and then I used the cam portion of it. So I took their CAD, which is the drawing part, and I took the cam, which is the machine tool part to program the machines. I'm gonna give Dana this program that I just finished. I was careful to use the same exact tools that he used on the first side. So now, all he has to do is place the part, re-zero it, grab the tools, adjust the heights for this side, and he's gonna be rocking and rolling. We held this on the first side, so now there's a hat on this side. We're cutting around and these pieces are dropping off. Then I came in the center and I pocketed everything out. Then I took the fly cutter and cut across the top, making it nice and smooth. From the first side, there's already a pocket here. So now I'm just creating the angle, the taper that drops in. And we're using a bull mill just to rough everything out. Now we're creating all the small little pockets. Then we're gonna come in and start ball tracking it, just 3D cutting it with a ball end mill that has a round surface that can just contour everything perfectly. What's up, sir? What's up, What's up Dana? Thanks. You got this thing? Yeah, it's done. Woo, man, you did a beautiful job on it, man. It looks great. Thanks. I love these uh, ribs right there. It's all aerospace, but it's for a drag racer. It's like paperweight, man. This thing is awesome. Yeah, I lost some weight for sure. Thing of beauty. Great job. Thank you. Is it in specs? That's perfect. All right, well, I'm gonna get it over to Sean. We're gonna get it inspected, get it deburred, so we can like get this on a plane and take it over to Detroit. Cool. Sound hey. good? Yep. All right, man. Thanks, son. Mission accomplished. I just got this part from Dana, the injector spacer for Coletta Motorsports. I'm gonna take it into Sean, where he's gonna perform the final inspection. Once he checks everything out and says that it is perfect, we're gonna box it up, and then in the morning, I'm gonna fly out to Detroit to personally deliver this part. 
While in Detroit, we're gonna visit the abandoned buildings where manufacturing used to happen on a huge level. It's gonna be incredible, it's gonna be an awesome journey, and it's gonna open people's eyes to the truth about American manufacturing. Boom! Next on Titan. There's rubble everywhere. Driver's life is in your team's hands. They're excited because there's a glimmer of hope. We're over here in Detroit. Walking through some abandoned buildings. You got 70,000 abandoned buildings in Detroit. There's rubble everywhere. And it's just a whole series of lost dreams. I'm walking around 3.5 million square feet of what used to be manufacturing. When I look around, I see guys working. I see guys walking, forklifts, driving up and down, big trucks coming in. Guys welding, guys machining, guys fabricating, assembly lines, making it all happen. These guys taking pride that they make an American product. You got Joe over here welding. You got Roberto over here doing some machining. At the end of the day, the buzzer hits. They step into their house that they paid for with the money working in this plant. That's what this country's supposed to be like. You take these manufacturing plants out and Joe's looking for a job. Roberto's looking for work. All the guys that were just in here working, loading trucks, they're all looking for work. Manufacturing is the answer. We need to put Americans back to work. Back in 2000, at the turn of the century, our government fought to get China into the WTO, the World Trade Organization. They said, that it's gonna open up Chinese borders for our products. But the truth was, those big businesses wanted to do manufacturing with cheap labor in other countries to make a better profit. Millions of Americans started losing their jobs. There is manufacturing going on, but it's behind closed doors and the public doesn't get to see it. I created this show to open those doors, to show them that today is a new day. It's a new dawn. When you drive down into the city of Detroit, there's a lot of construction going on, a lot of positive things happening, a lot of new businesses starting to come up, and they're excited because there's a glimmer of hope. But when you go to the outskirts, when you come to the broken buildings, it reminds you that that glimmer of hope is a small portion. Technology is through the roof. The machines are on a whole nother level. And Americans are only using about 30% of what is available to them. The days of running a few parts at a time are over. We have to get inventive. We have to look at the machines, the processes, our workforce, and figure out how to run hundreds of parts, thousands of parts at a time, and then run them five, 10, 20 times faster than anybody's ever seen. And that's what we're doing every day. Not only can we do the work, not only do we have better quality, but that we can do it at a cheaper price. We can compete with anybody else in the world right now, but lately we've been giving it up. When we look at all the concrete blocks laying all around here, and this huge manufacturing building right behind us, this is a symbol right here. When you look at American jobs, when you look at manufacturing jobs, that's one job. But when a manufacturing plant comes in and actually creates those jobs in a community, you help spark all these other jobs. The gas station down the street, the schools, the stores, the little restaurants that the manufacturing employees go and sit down and eat at. We need to understand as a country that we have to protect our manufacturing jobs. We have to fight for them. That is what Titan American Built is about 
And that is what we're fighting for, to put Americans back to work. All right, today is the day. It has been a crazy week. We got a challenge from Tim at Coletta Motorsports to do this injector spacer for a dragster that's going to the Nationals. I've heard Connie Coletta's name for years. He is a pioneer in this sport. He also has a cargo business where he flies 747s all across the world. And that business pays for the motorsports. It's awesome. I heard that during 9-11, Connie Coletta was the only non-military plane to fly in relief. This guy is a true American, and he's been racing since the early 60s. He's a legend, and it's an honor to come in here. We're gonna go check out his team, check out his crew. We're gonna see how they manufacture everything right here in America, right here in Detroit, making it happen when everybody says it can't. Boom! I'm here to see Tim Evans. I'm here to see Tim Evans. Tim Evans? Yes. Let me ring him for All you. Right, thank you. He'll be right off. Awesome. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Hey, Tim, it's great seeing you. Titan, good to see you again. Thanks for awesome. coming. We got this part that you gave us. It was a little challenging, but we put it on the UMC 750, the five axis, rotated it, caught it on camera. The part's beautiful. Just got to make sure it fits on that race car now. Yeah, well, welcome to Coletta Motorsports. Well, uh, awesome. as you can see, we've been racing for a long time. This is just a small selection of some of the trophies they've won in that time. But I'm more interested in getting this car to inspection right now. And uh, why don't we do that? And then I'll introduce you to Jim, who's been here since the beginning. That sounds great. Let's All right. do it. All right. Let's go. Cool. My name is Jim Oberhofer, and I'm the Vice President of Operations of Coletta Motorsports. You know, when I started here back in 1988, we had five employees. We ran two race cars out of the same trailer. And now we have 65 employees. We have eight semi trucks and trailers going down the road. We have a CNC shop now. We have a chassis shop. We have a repair shop that we do all our repairs of all of our parts on. So this is our new shop. We just barely got all the machines put in and wired up. And everything you see here, basically the vision of Connie and Jim, who you're gonna meet in a little bit. Awesome, this place is clean. I love it, man. Let me introduce you to Scott. Hey, Scott, come take a look at this. I can just brought it in from California. It's our hey, new Scott, injector space. Nice, to, nice meet to meet you. You guys got an awesome place here, man. Thank you. So here is the park. Oh, that looks good. That looks beautiful, Titan. It's just the way I imagined it. We threw it up on the five axis and we just rotated it around and just nailed every side. Pretty much did the whole part in one operation. Flipped it over, finished it off. It looks great, Titan. Thanks for getting it done for us. No problem. It was an honor to do the part and I'm just happy to be here at Coletta Motorsports. Can't wait to walk around and check this place out. And make sure we don't scratch it. Yeah. Oh, Titan, this is Jim Oberhofer. Jim, thank hey, you Titan. very much for having me. Oh, it's a pleasure. Thanks oh, for being here. This place is amazing. It's a beautiful looking part, Titan. Thank you very much. It's American made. Awesome. Now, I can't wait to get it on the race car and see uh, how it performs on the car. The car is getting taken apart, and I guess you guys are going to be putting it back together already in just a little bit. Let's uh, give it to these guys, let them inspect it, and then I'll take you around, show you around the shop. Sounds good. Cool. Both myself and our owner, Connie Coletta, we believe in investing in our company, and we believe that we invested the right way by buying all these brand new Haas CNC machines. We're very, very proud of the CNC shop that we have here. Connie's a guy who likes being very self-sufficient. It's taking care of yourself. I control my own destiny. I can do it as efficient as anybody else. All I need is the hardware to do it. I have the talent to do it, and that's why we have these five machines here that we just purchased. You're talking self-efficient. I mean, that's like our country, right? I mean, if we're manufacturing and manufacturing built this country, we should be self-sufficient and be able to make our own products here and make it cheaper. And that's what you guys are doing right here. So it's kind of like the model can actually be used on a bigger scale, right? 
Absolutely, and we're we're here in you know basically in Detroit, the Motor City, where Motor City, where manufacturing pretty much started back with Henry Ford. Cars are awesome in Detroit. I mean, it's what built this like city. But I'm excited to show different parts. Manufacturing is everything you can touch, you can feel, you stand on, stand under, right? It's everything that's around us. And you guys are making parts for like, you know, these amazing dragsters and stuff and for airplanes. That's American manufacturing, right? Oh, it is. It's I, awesome. And, and Tim here, I think he's become Connie's favorite employee. He, yeah. he just fell in love with the idea he had to create a, a beautiful CNC shop for Coletta Motorsports. Great job. Uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, it's been a lot of fun. It's awesome. Tight, let's go check out the rest of the shop. I want to show you our race car that goes 330 miles an yeah. hour. Yeah, can't wait. Let's check it out. Next on Titan. Delivering mail to the troops over in the Middle East. Oh, you ready, Jenna? You know, Titan, we moved in this building in 1999 and we had the back corner of the shop there and Connie was going to try to lease out the remaining 30,000 square feet. I told him, I said, you can't do that. I said, we're going to fill this whole place up with race car stuff someday. That's awesome. And he looked at me like I was crazy. And, and here we are basically 16 years later, we filled up this whole shop with four race car teams, a CNC shop, a chassis shop. And I told Connie, I said, we're out of space. We need another building. Another and he looked building. at me like I'm crazy. That's awesome. It's very important to show all these awesome companies and to show people that machine shops is not this grimy, greasy, crazy place. It's clean floors, automation, high-tech machinery, good pay. That's what you got right here. That's yeah, awesome. we want to be cleaner than a hospital room. That's it. That's it. Manufacturing. It's, it's pretty amazing, you know, working for a guy like Connie Coletta and all the great things he does for his employees, you know, the 65 people here at Coletta Motorsports and mm. a thousand people work for him at his maintenance facility in Oscoda, Michigan, mm. a town that only has 3,500 people. How he just treats every one of them like they're part of his family. And then not only that, this country, the night of 9-11, he was the only non-military aircraft out in the country flying relief supplies from LA to Philadelphia. That's a man to help with, with the, what was going on. We're in what we call a craft program, which is craft stands for Civilian Reserve Air Fleet. It's an operation that the government has put together that they have commercial people that are out and are participating into it so that if there's ever a demand, they can ring the bell right now and we would be there with airplanes, crews, and do anything that they need to have happen. And today he continues by delivering mail to the troops over in the Middle East. and. You know, the state of Michigan, we all know the struggles that it's had and how he's trying so hard to help with the rebuilding of, you know, not only Detroit, but Michigan. My name is Steve Ortner, and I'm the owner of Mountain Machine. And Connie gave us the start in this business. We've got a 14,000 square foot shop, 17 guys, and 15 CNC machines. A lot of the work that we have now used to go overseas. And through high-speed machining and our processes, we've been able to be competitive, not only competitive, but able to beat the prices in China and give a much higher quality part to our customers than what they were ever receiving from overseas. It just makes you feel good to work for a guy like, like Connie and, and the things that he's doing to try to help make this country great again. All of this, all the planes, all the employees, and he's just a humble, awesome man. Yeah, you would never know that this man owns a, you know, over a billion dollar a year company. I'm in awe sometimes just meeting everybody and yet we're just all builders, makers, making things yeah. happen. Yeah. It's awesome. Man. That's Connie's motto. He's, you know, he says, we make things happen. Solving problems. That's right. That's what we do. That's right. Huh. So many races, huh? Oh, there's so many races in the history of Coletta Motorsports. You know, we've got so many great pictures of Connie Coletta, and Scott Coletta, and Doug Coletta, and this is a 1967 car that basically did everything for us. Without this car, we're not here. Back in the 1960s, I won my first drag race. Actually, I won three races in a row, and I was able to get enough money to buy an airplane. Started with the with the freight airplane, actually it was a 310 Cessna, the fellow that taught me how to fly. 
he had one and he hauled auto parts around. Well, I was on the race team at Ford Motor Car Company. I utilized that and uh, everything continued to grow. And how many 747s did you say you have? He's got almost about 30 747s. 37 47s. Yeah. That is amazing. It, it is. It's, it's amazing it's to think of what drag racing basically has led him into. Yeah, in the American dream, being in this country, this free country, where if you have a dream, if you have ambition, if you have work ethic and you're willing to go after something, it doesn't matter what kind of background, it doesn't matter where you come from, you can achieve great things, right? Oh, absolutely, and Connie is the, the epitome of that. It's hard not to have uh, Connie's enthusiasm and passion you know, rub off on you. I mean, I yeah. owe a lot of what I am to Connie Coletta and the, and the Coletta family for sure. That's so good. Awesome, man. Awesome. So that's the shop, and I think Scott's just about done, so let's see how he's doing. Awesome. This place is amazing. Hey, guys. What's up, Scott? How'd it go, Scott? Man, I measured everything out. Everything is to print. I can't wait to see this thing on the car. It mm. looks great. You guys hey, did a good job. That's what I like to hear. We've got a couple of days before the cars have to be at the track, uh, so let's go get it on the car and see how it goes. Woo! We're going to see it assembled. I can't wait. All right. Sounds good, man. Well, let's go put it on the car. Awesome. It's tight. What we're doing right now is we're getting ready for the next race in Sonoma, putting a brand new short block in, ready to go. Cylinder heads, manifold, supercharger, and then the new spacer plate that you, you built for us. Awesome. And then we're going to go to town. And it's amazing, in between rounds at an NHRA event, these guys, we could make a run, come back, tear the engine completely apart, put it back together, and have it running in less than 30 minutes. Wow. And uh, th these guys are truly amazing. It's organized chaos. Mm. And there's eight guys around an engine, and they all know how to fit in perfectly. It's like a puzzle that works very well together. A lot of viewers, they look at it and it's just so much horsepower and the fire and like this thing blazing. They don't really see the art and how intricate everything is. The fabrication is just absolutely beautiful. And I mean, it's a big car. It's dangerous and your driver's life is in your team's hands, right? You know, our drivers are our family as well. And, and you know, Doug Coletta that drives this car, he's, he's like a brother to us. And when you're going 330 miles an hour in a matter of 3.7 seconds and you have 10,000 horsepower behind you, you want to make sure that he's safe and that there, nothing can go wrong. And these guys take a lot of pride in making sure that Doug is safe, you know, going down that racetrack. It's amazing. It is. Looks like we're just about ready for our part. We are. <laughs> you excited? All right, I'm excited. <laughs> it better fit. I'll bet it does. <laughs> Tiny, looks like it fits perfect. It's amazing, back in the old days, you get mm -hmm. a new part, and you would spend days trying to make something fit, but with the technology these days, it's amazing. The whole engine is just so beautiful, you know? It is, you almost don't even want to run it sometimes no. when it's done. It looks, it looks uh, so amazing. nice. Putting the injector on now, Titan. And over the years, we keep moving these injectors up higher and forward, you know, to try to get it up in clean air. And by using the spacer plate, it's allowed us to move the injector up another two inches higher, move awesome. it about another two inches forward, which will hopefully make this car run about 330 miles an hour on a consistent basis. So now that everything's all ready and it's beautiful, it's awesome, I guess I'm gonna see you next week down in Sonoma. Yeah, and if everything goes right, we'll put this car in the winter circle, mm. and then you can join us in the mosh pit on the start There's line. There's a you're, mosh pit? Oh That's yeah, you're awesome. a big guy, and you probably create some havoc in there. <laughs> That'll be amazing. So thank you so much for your time. I mean, your team, your employees, like this whole company is amazing. It's awesome, and it has a lot to do with you, along with Connie Coletta and the whole family. and. Uh, I just want to shake your hand. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ty. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Cool. So I'll see you next week. That's right. All right, man. All right. It's going to be awesome. What an amazing experience. I flew into Detroit excited. I wanted to tell the story about American manufacturing. 
I wanted to go see the old buildings, the broken down plants, tell a story about hope. I was excited to come over here to Coletta Motorsports. I wanted to see the engines, the horsepower, the machines, everybody working. And believe me, I have not been disappointed. But what I've truly found coming to Coletta is family. Connie Coletta, a man that started racing back in the 60s, who now has thousands of employees, the fabric that binds them. It is what makes history. And today, they're standing here united, American strong, and they're making their products right in the great United States of America, showing everyone that they are American built. Boom. Just having a great time here at the races. Thank you for your service. Here we are at the track. Titan and his team did a great job of getting the part done for us. We got it on the car. We're getting ready to run. We had to put a little bit of color on it, kind of dulled it down a little. We don't want everybody knowing what we're doing before we even get it out to the track. So we'll have a little bit of time to enjoy the extra performance we're going to get from this part before everybody else in the pit copies it. This is our part right here. When Titan came, to me and said that we're going to be making this dragster part it was really awesome because I love dragsters, I love racing in general, and now I'm here and now I get to see the part itself on the actual car. It's awesome. It's going to be an awesome day. The last couple weeks have been awesome. Being back in the machine shop with my family, making American parts, coming to the races now and seeing our final product. This is what America's about. It has been an amazing day hanging out with the crew and my husband, Tyne. I never experienced anything like this before. It's been so exciting. Hearing the engines going at full throttle is so unbelievable. I had a great time today. Here we are at Sonoma Raceway watching our parts go ripping down the track. It's awesome. We work hard, we play hard. American built. We're about to watch Doug Coletta and his drag racer blast down this track with our part, our injector spacer attached to the engine. You see the crowd? It's absolutely amazing. It's electric right here. Blue collar Americans coming out to watch racing on a Saturday morning. It's a family event. Boom! Oh, you ready, Jenna? Oh, uh, 3.8. This show has been incredible. We've gone to Detroit. We've done some crazy manufacturing. We brought a story of hope. We're watching some awesome drag racing. This show, Titan American Built, it is a TV show, but I'm a real machinist. I run a real crew. We're making real products, and we're doing it right here in America. It's everybody back in the shop, uh, from the guy who runs the parts, that designs the parts, and runs the programs with Autodesk that allow us to make these parts so that we can be just a little bit better, a little bit faster, and at the end of the day, be in victory lane. We built this entire country off of manufacturing. And when you pick something up and it says made in China, put it down and buy something American so we can support American jobs. You support American jobs, crime goes down. Your community gets safer. America rises and we have an incredible future. My name is Titan and this is American Build. Boom. What's going on with this fly, man? All at the same time, so it's super good. So, hold on one second. This is Titan. Let's just start murdering these guys. 
be like, boom! <laughs> yeah, son! Tell you what, man, this thing gonna go on a drive car, man. We can go down and race, watch it go. Right! Shoot!